this is Sarah with SewingPartsOnline.com and welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Sewing. In episode 20, we are finishing up our series and moving from beginners to intermediates by learning how to do full bust and small bust adjustments. Now in this tutorial, we are going to go over how to do the bust adjustment on patterns that have one side dart and patterns that have the side dart and a waist dart. Now, if you can bear with me for the first part of the episode, I'm going to try to can I teach you the background of bust adjustments and why we get end up with the measurements that we end up with? There's a formula you can use to just plug your calculations into. I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. If you get confused, just rewind, replay, whatever to get you through it. I know it's a lot to take in, but learning how to do bust adjustments is super helpful in helping your clothing fit better because once everything fits in the bust area, it's pretty easy to make simple adjustments to the rest of the outfit. So without further ado, let's jump in and learn about bust adjustments. All right, guys, let's do some bust adjustments. These can be intimidating, but I'm gonna walk you through it every step of the way. And if you get stuck, just replay the video. The truth is, if you want your clothing to look good, you have to make some pattern adjustments. But the rewarding feeling of a well-fit garment is totally worth it. All right, what is a bust adjustment and why do we have to make them? Well, just like ready-made clothing, pattern companies base their designs off a generic body size. It's up to us to make small adjustments to the pattern so that it fits our body well. So let's do some review real quick. Remember, the high bust is found by wrapping your measuring tape around your body like so. The tape will be at a slight upward angle and should rest on the flat of your chest, not on any of your cleavage. The full bust is when you wrap the tape around the fullest part of your breast, AKA the apex. The tape will be parallel to the floor. See, most pattern companies will put your bust into three different sizes based on the difference between your high bust and your full bust. So if you have a one inch difference between your high bust and your full bust, you're an A cup. If you have a two inch difference, you're a B cup. If you have a three inch difference, you are a C cup. Now we aren't talking about bra sizes here, though the word cup is kind of confusing and leads you to think that way, but this is a little different. Anywho, so most companies stay in the middle and draft their pattern proportions based on a two inch difference between your high bust and your full bust, AKA a B cup. If your measurements put you in the A cup, then you need to do a small bust adjustment. An SBA reduces the amount of fabric in the chest area, preventing a baggy, saggy garment. You also do a small bust adjustment if your bust size is in a smaller dress size than your waist. If your measurements put you in the C cup category or even larger if your high bust and full bust difference is greater than three, then you have to do a full bust adjustment. A FBA will increase the amount of fabric in the chest area, preventing tight ripples and discomfort, you know, because breathing is important. You would also do a full bust adjustment if your high bust measurement is in a size larger than your waist measurement. So let me add an asterisk right now. There are a good deal of independent designers whom draft patterns based on smaller busts and larger busts. For instance, Colette patterns are drafted with C cup proportions, meaning her designs are based around a difference of three inches between your high bust and full bust. So just know that there are patterns out there designed for your body type. So now you know why we do bust adjustments, let's move forward. As you're learning, I really recommend sewing patterns using knit fabric. It's so much more forgiving than wovens. Also, try to pick something that's basic with just a side and waist dart or even just a side dart. And stay positive. We are learning and mistakes are bound to happen. It's just part of the process. Do not be hard on yourself. So you have a pattern sitting in front of you. The first thing you need to do is pick a size. Pick the size that corresponds with your waist measurement. If you're in between sizes, just pick the smaller size. You can readjust the waist later by doing a waist adjustment as outlined in episode 18. So let's say my waist measures a size 18. That's the pattern piece that I'll cut out. Trace the tissue paper onto a sturdy piece of paper or poster. You don't want anything flimsy. Whether you need to do a full bust adjustment or a small bust adjustment, we're going to start by drawing the same lines. The first line we draw is going to go from the top to the bottom of the pattern straight through the apex and parallel to the center front line. If you have one of these nifty waist darts, you can draw through the center of that dart. If not, hold the pattern up to your body and try to roughly mark your apex. Again, that is the fullest part of your bust. 
Next, draw a line from the tip of your side dart to your apex. Then extend the line through the center of your dart. If you don't have a dart, just draw a line straight out to about two inches below the top of the side seam right under that armhole. Next, draw this line at the waistline or at the lengthen and shorten line. Next, grab your curved ruler because we need to draw a line that starts one third of the way down the armhole. So use the armhole curve to measure the length of the armhole. You'll have to kind of measure and mark and reposition and mark again to get an accurate measurement. Use a straight edge to draw a line from that marking to the apex. The idea here is that the line you're marking doesn't totally mess up the armhole. If your armhole is split into two parts like this blouse, just start the line at the top of the armhole. All right, we've got all of our lines drawn. Let's cut this up to make some hinges. First, cut from the bottom, pivot at the apex, and follow the line up to the armhole. But do not cut all the way through. Leave a tiny bit so the paper remains intact. Cut the side line starting at the dart, follow the line until you reach the apex, but stop about one eighth of an inch before you reach the apex. Again, we want to keep the paper intact. Lastly, cut the inside waistline up to the dart. Or if you don't have a dart, until you reach that center line. Now check out this awesome hinge movement. Now you are all prepped to do either a full bust adjustment or a small bust adjustment. When you look at your pattern, you see there is a bust measurement, but you want to use your high bust so that everything fits in the shoulders, not your full bust. So remember, I'm gonna use the size 18. The bust measurement is 40 inches. But what if my high bust measurement is 42 inches? Then now I'm in a higher size and I need to do a full bust adjustment. How do we know how much extra fabric to add? How much do we need to spread these lines apart to make room for our bust? Well, I have a formula for you. For a standard pattern, you know, the ones using those B cut proportions we talked about, you take your full bust minus your high bust minus two, then divide by two. Let's do an example. Let's say our full bust is 44 and your high bust is 40. So 44 minus 40 is four, minus two is two, divided by two is one. So we would spread this open by one inch. And all you do is let the other hinges conform to that adjustment. And that is literally the hardest part of this whole project, just wrapping your head around the math. And if this doesn't make sense, feel free to email us or message us. Let's go off our first example and add one inch. And now all you have to do is move this little block section down to be lined up with the new length. So let's just fill in all these gaps with some paper. You want to leave some extra paper around the darts because we have to reshape them here in a minute but you can trim the rest of the paper. If you don't have a waist start, then you have to do a little extra step. You need to cut the rest of this line, move the smaller block down to match up the hem line again, just as we did before, and move the whole block over to butt up with the edge of the other block. We do this because we don't have an extra dart to accommodate the extra waist width that's been added due to the adjustment. Now again, fill in the gaps with paper, making sure to add a little extra to the side seam because we need to draw a new side seam. The original side seam was kind of flared out on a curve, so I'm going to grab my curved ruler to true up the new side seam. Very, very easy. It's just a matter of connecting the two sections. So now we need to redraw these darts. In order to do that, we need to find our apex again. And you know what that means? Time to awkwardly hold the pattern up to your body again and mark your apex. Now that you have your new apex, you want to adjust your darts. For the fuller ladies, you want the point of your dart to be two inches away from your apex. Now we need to redraw the dart. You can use the old lines as a guide. You want the new endpoints of your dart to be right on top of the old dart endpoints. Your dart is gonna end up being a little bigger than your original dart and it's supposed to. Now we'll do the exact same thing with the waist dart. The point of the dart should be two inches below the apex. Have the two endpoints match up with the old two endpoints. 
Now to trim the dart ends. Fold the darts together so that those long lines sit on top of each other, just like what you're gonna do when you sew the seam, and trim it at an angle. Repeat on the waist dart, and you're finished. All right, now let's check out a small bust adjustment. It's very similar to a full bust adjustment, but this time instead of spreading the slices apart, we're going to overlap them. Again, we have a little formula that we will use to see how much we actually need to overlap. Again, this is based on the standard B cut proportions you see in most patterns. Take your high bust measurement and add two, minus your full bust measurement and divide by two. So let's say my high bust is 40 and my full bust is 41. 40 plus two is 42, minus 41 equals one, divided by two is 0.5, so half an inch. So we'll overlap this slice a half an inch. See how all these hinges move to accommodate the adjustment? It's exactly what we want. The dart will want to move and that's good. Let it overlap. Now take this square cutout and overlap it as well so it lines up with the hem and tape in place. We have a little problem here, don't we? By overlapping these pieces, we've made the waistline smaller. So we need to extend this line that we drew at the waist all the way to the side seam and completely cut it out just like we did with the other block. Now shift it over so it butts up with the edge of the other block and tape in place. You do the exact same thing on a blouse with only one dart. Draw a line to mark the amount you're taking in, shift everything over, line up the cut block along the hemline, tape everything in place, cut the other block along the waistline, and shift over so that the edge butts up with the other block and tape in place. Now tape some extra paper along the side seam so we can true up these lines. Again, my side seam flares a little, so I'll grab my curved ruler and simply connect the two pieces. Redrawing the dart is exactly the same as with the full bust adjustment, except instead of measuring two inches out from the apex, you want to mark the dart point about one to one and a half inches away from the apex. Again, you want to draw the new darts so that the line ends overlap the original line ends. Now just trim it all down. The distance from your apex to the dart point can be fine tuned later by extending the dart stitches or removing them. You'll see what you like best as you experiment with your body proportions. You definitely just don't want a dart point to be too close to the apex or you'll end up with a funky point over your bust. So there's just something extra I want to go over real quick. Just something to think about since we are making a pattern smaller, which means fixing mistakes will be a bit harder. Let me explain. See how much smaller this two dart blouse is compared to the original? It's pretty neat, but see how much of a size difference there is? Well, there's more than one way to true up a seam, depending on your body proportions. When you're making clothing smaller, even if it's just in the bust, it's imperative to test your pattern adjustments out on a muslin rough dress first. You can always make a side seam smaller, but if you cut it too small, it's really hard to make it bigger, sometimes even impossible. The easiest way is definitely just to true up from the dart bottom to the waist, just like I showed you a second ago. But if you find that the alteration still isn't fitting correctly and you're uncomfortable or getting weird ripples, you can extend the darts out to the original length, then taper up into the armhole. This way you keep everything under the darts exactly the same as the original pattern. Don't be afraid to play around. Making your own garments is an art after all. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below or reach out to us on sewingpartsonline.com through email. You can come and hang out with our sewing community on Facebook at facebook.com slash sewingpartsonline, Twitter at sewingparts, Google+, Instagram, Pinterest, we're everywhere. And be sure to subscribe because just because this is the end of our Beginner's Guide to Sewing series, we have way more videos coming. So click that button and become a fan.